17 years ago. A decision was made by three brothers that ended up touching the childhoods of millions of people all over the world. Devious Multi-User Dungeon, aka Devious Mud, began development solely by Andrew Gower in his home in Cambridge. The game utilized oblique graphics and was originally going to be text-based. Only two shops and only about ten objects existed within the game itself at this time, and the very first quest ever released, but wasn't even completely done itself, was the quest called Sheep Shearer that we all know today. Devious Mud also had a resizable game screen, which would later be an aspect that RuneScape players would have to wait for, for years and years to come. A new version of Devious Mud was released in 1999. Although it was completely rewritten, it kept the same name and remained rather similar to the original version in appearance. It was released to the public as a beta for one week during this year, but because of the limited release time, there are only a few screenshots in existence of the game, and only 20 people ever managed to actually play the game. In October of this year, Andrew Gower started another rewrite, but this time with his brothers Paul and Ian. A number of changes were made, and the game was renamed RuneScape, and became the version of RuneScape Classic that everybody knows about today. Sadly, this version doesn't really get the recognition it deserves as being the real RS1, and much of the information about this version of the game was lost to history a long time ago. With over 120,000 map tiles used, 800 frames of animations for monsters and players, 200 different objects and items to find and trade, 2,900 different items of scenery with over 100 different designs for each of them, and over 250 characters all walking around the map with over 75 different designs for each as well, Devious Mud was left behind and what is known today to be RuneScape Classic was born and began development unreleased to the public. Just four days after the new year, on January 4th, 2001, RuneScape Classic was released to the public finally, and though many had negative predictions about how the game would turn out, it became successful very quickly. On August 13th of this same year, The Wilderness was released, and even though they had been using their name for trade for three years prior to this, Jagex LTD, or Jagex Limited, was officially formed, and RuneScape brought them much publicity alongside with the other games that they had already developed previously to this time. Although RuneScape had only four worlds to play on at this time, they were almost always filled with 1,000 plus players. It's debatable that this is the most crucial year of RuneScape's entire existence. Much of what took place within this year shaped the game for what it was going to become many years into the future. On February 27, 2002, Jagex released RuneScape membership alongside with it the new Herb Law skill known today as Herb Lore. And on March 25th of this year, just one month after Herb Law came the skill Fletching, and after Fletching on April 30th, another month later, the skill Thieving was finally released. Another month after that, the game was becoming more and more popular. Cheating began to happen within the game, and on May 29th, over 2,000 RuneScape Classic accounts were stat wiped for macroing, and as more players came to the game this year, it was clear that the game was headed for great things, and so on September 24th, the famous Tutorial Island was released, and the last update of this year on December 12th was the release of the Agility skill.
In December of this year, RuneScape was becoming more and more of an unsurprising success. Everybody was loving the game, but just as the virtual world of RuneScape was developing, so was real life's technologies and computers. RuneScape's game engine is known as RuneTech, and from 1998 to 2000, the game version of Devious Mud was only being ran on RuneTech 1, and from the year 2000 to 2003, RuneScape Classic was being ran on the revised version called RuneTech 2. But it was clear that RuneScape Classic was coming to an end, and with the new developments in Java technology, and after many months of development not released to the public yet, RuneScape 2 was finally released as an open beta on December 1st of this year, and the results could not have been more successful. All members had access to the first phase of the RS2 beta. Their characters and stats were copied over from the live game being RuneScape Classic at the time, but their items and quest history were not copied over. This was deliberate as Jagex wanted players to test out all of RS2 beta's content. Initially, only the free-to-play area was available during the first phase of the beta, and the new areas and quests that already existed in RuneScape Classic were being gradually released over the period of the beta itself so that they could be released in RS2 also. The Lumbridge teleporting spell was also deliberately broken so it could be cast without runes even at level 1 magic, and this allowed players to escape to a safe area in the event that they found themselves trapped in a glitch during these times in the newer version of the game. The second phase of the beta began on March 3rd, 2004, and players had again their characters copied over from the live game, including items and quests this time, and the Lumbridge teleporting spell had its level requirement and rune cost reinstated, and on March 17th, 2004, the final phase of the beta began. Characters were once again copied over from the live game being RuneScape Classic, and as for this stage of testing, free players were given access to the beta alongside all members who previously already had access for the past few months. Not long after the free players were given access, I created my account Moplox, and mine and so many others like me began to arrive to the game because of this, starting a journey that had no ending. On March 29th of this year, RuneScape 2 officially was released to the entire public for good, and during this time, most of RuneScape 1 servers, being RuneScape Classic I mean, were left online so players would have the ability to choose which style they wanted to play, and the previous version to RS2 officially became known as RuneScape Classic. When the beta ended this year, the Duel Arena was officially added alongside the runecrafting skill, player moderators, the Castle Wars minigame, and the very final piece of content for RuneScape 2 was the Underground Pass quest that was added on April 15th of this year. The game was becoming more and more popular, reaching almost 50,000 people playing every single day. On January 26th, the Slayer skill was added, and three months later on April 22nd, the popular fan sites associated with RuneScape at this time hijacked thousands of players' accounts because many people trusted the fan sites that seemed official enough to use their real RuneScape username and passwords on. And because of this, further precautions around the site navigation links were always posted, encouraging players to never again use their passwords or username on any other website but RuneScape. A couple weeks after this incident, on May 9th, the famous Barrows minigame along with the Barrows armor was released into the game, and on July 9th, 2005, the very first player to ever achieve a maximum skill total of 1,881 was the legend himself, Zezma. Two days later, on July 11th, the farming skill was released. It was becoming more and more apparent that RuneScape 2 was going to be the primary game for Jagex Limited, and on August 3rd, 2005, RuneScape Classic had officially closed. On October 4th, 2005, RuneScape's most toughest monster at the time, Jad, at a combat level of 702, was released, and also in October of this year, Jagex Limited, who was becoming more popular than ever, received an investment from Insight Venture Park Partners, a firm in New York, New York that focuses exclusively on investing technology, software, and internet-enabled businesses, and currently has a capital base of approximately $7.6 billion. Eight years after the game had been out thus far, RuneScape was now more than ever in its prime, and the Gower brothers in this year were roughly worth about 32 million pounds. This was the year that many people began showing up, and the RuneScape website itself was actually changed a bit, and this was RuneScape's website appearance everyone would come to know and remember long after it was gone years later. 
Nearly 5,000 RuneScape Classic accounts were banned for macroing on January 12th of this year, and on the 19th, just one week later, over 15,000 RuneScape 2 accounts were also banned for macroing as well. The game was becoming very successful, but macroing continued to be a problem that just wouldn't stop growing. On April 18th, Pest Control was released, and on May 31st, 2006, the construction skill was released, and it brought loads of issues. Six days later, ominously enough taking place on the date of 666, the Valador Massacre was born, and the player Duriel321 became a legend for attacking others outside of the wilderness, even though many others discovered the bug too. Grave times were upon the community of RuneScape, and in July of this month, the old knight, famous for being ranked 2 underneath Zezma for a long time, died of colon cancer. On November 21st, my personal favorite skill, Hunter, was released. It was at the end of this year that RuneScape was at a peak of over 200,000 people online, perhaps the game's highest point of popularity. the year that everything changed. As Jagex gained users, they also grew their employee base. On the 4th of May in 2007, RuneScape had over 6 million active free accounts and over 1 million active pay-to-play subscribers. On the 23rd of October, the current CEO of RuneScape during this time, Constant Tedder, was replaced by former European CEO of PayPal named Jeff Edison. He replaced Constant in order to accelerate international growth for Jagex. Jagex began receiving all types of publicity, and for this year, they were ranked 59th in the Sunday Times article 100 Best Companies to Work For. On January 4th of this year, Barbarian Assault was released, and a month later, a 14-hour long riot occurred in World 28 at Falador due to a famous PKer and YouTuber named Elvmage being muted for luring other players, and on June 2nd, more riots occurred in World 60 64, 65, and 66 that caused an entire server blackout. On August 28th, the God Wars Dungeons was released, and following it on November 26th of 2007, so was the Grand Exchange, and quite possibly the worst update in RuneScape's history. On the 10th of December, one week later, the wilderness as everybody knew it was gone replaced by Bounty Hunter and Clan Wars, and the Duel Arena was updated to allow free players access, starting even more riots. It's debatable by many that 2007 was in fact the year that RuneScape officially died and many players left the game completely. Almost as if everyone was completely ignored, this year started out horribly. On January 2nd of this year, the free trade abilities of players was removed and in its place was a limit that was added depending on your progress of your account. Merchanting was no longer possible and gift giving became a thing of the past. On January 15th, shortly after this, the summoning skill was released and on April 9th, the Fist of Guthix minigame was added. Further adding to the sad times of 2008, Ashley Miller, aka Fat Wrecked, a popular YouTuber, died of heart failure, and on the 1st of July, the RuneScape HD beta was officially released, and RuneScape's game engine was moved on up into a newer version of RuneTech, and from September to December of this year, the official era of Zezima had officially come to an end. He says that the game, in his opinion at this time, was becoming too progressively easier over time, and Gert Jars took his place. In October, PvP Worlds were released alongside it with Stealing Creations minigame, the long-awaited Dragon Plate body, and the first official Grandmaster quest which was Wild Gothic Sleeps. Jagex released their first novel too, Betrayal at Falador, they also released the Funor website which was another gaming website released with games most popular being Armies of Gilinor and Arcanists, and many people went to Funorb actually and forgot all about RuneScape, myself included. Replacing Edison as RuneScape's CEO, Mark Gearhard, aka Mod MMG, arrived. Soul Wars was added on February 9th, and on May 6th, the Bounty Hunter Worlds were released. It was also this year that Jagex was ranked 29th at the most successful game studio in the world by Develop Magazine, and it also won Best Desktop Game Project Award at the Duke's Choice Awards, the Golden Joystick for Best UK Developer, and was listed in the Deloitte Awards Technology Fast 50. The company also gained its first Best Company One to Watch Award too. The game was changing very quickly, and had 
almost been released to the public for almost a decade. Though HD graphics had arrived and many new quests and updates arrived too, RuneScape still had the same character model and appearances alongside that. The same appearances of weapons and armor still continued to stay the same as well, and some players considered sticking around for this, but it didn't last forever. The logout timer extended from 90 seconds to 5 minutes this year, a number of words were removed from the chat filter, the magic interface was changed, enabling players to sort spells by categories, an alternate location for Varrock Teleport was introduced, located south of the Grand Exchange, the deposit all feature for banking was introduced, the value of items that can be dropped while in combat was reduced to only 1,000 coins, the font within the main game also changed, and the entire old style of the RuneScape website was removed and updated. On February 1st, the 10k trade limit, while trading with only your friends, was increased due to so many complaints. On March 3rd, 2010, hit points as everyone knew it to be called would never be called hit points again. Instead, HP was now known as Constitution, causing even more major riots within the community. The RuneScape lobby within the login screen was introduced on the same day, and on the 12th of March, RuneScape's first ever bonus XP weekend had officially launched. The big ticket competition was announced. It was basically an ongoing content held by Jagex. There were meant to be 24 prizes, but only 3 big tickets were given out until the content was stopped without notice. The prizes were an all expenses paid trip to Jagex Studios, VIP treatment, a party, and lifetime membership to RuneScape. On April 12th of this year, the Dungeoneering skill was also released. Two months later, the price of climbing boots skyrocketed to Grand Exchange price of 75k, once again creating millionaires overnight and riots overnight too. In August, Elite Clue Scrolls and 150 new items were released alongside with their rewards, and also in August, the very first RuneFest was held, and the last update to the game this year was the Dragon Defender. Many players stuck around and gave the game a chance, and there were also many players who were enjoying what the game was becoming, but there were more people who left than stayed. Many people who I asked during these times that still played back then told me that they stuck around because RuneScape was simply just the only game that they liked playing, and even though they may have disagreed with the recent updates, they had nowhere else to go. But perhaps one of the most disappointing updates of all time this year that came out with the new Constitution updates was in fact that the damage along with HP was now multiplied by 10. On January 4th of this year, it was officially RuneScape's 10th anniversary and Jagex gave out $10,000 every single month for the year of 2011 to some lucky person because of it. The God Wars dungeon boss next at a combat level of 1001 became RuneScape's most toughest boss on January 10th and finally on February 1st 2011 after three years the wilderness and free trade had returned but it was far too late. Many had left and never returned and a good portion of them honestly probably don't even know today that the wilderness and free trade are now once more existing again. The fourth chapter of the Elemental Workshop was released on March 1st, and a couple months later on May 3rd, the infamous Capes of Distinction were released. On July 7th, the fourth server blackout of this year occurred, and on the 12th of July, the Jadinko Lair and Whipvine were released as well. And at the end of this year, the RuneScape website once again received an update, making it even more unrecognizable to many. But it was still a nice design nonetheless, and on June 28th, the Members Loyalty Program was released, and on July 26th, Clan Citadels were released as well. On the 25th of October, Bot Nuke Day occurred, banning over 1.5 million macroer accounts, and this resulted in the game being offline for approximately 1 hour and 7 minutes while Jagex worked on the updates and tested their systems after the Bot Nuke timer reached the number 0 before launching. At the very end of this year, on December 6th, the last update this year, a tool belt and a money pouch was released into the game, making skilling a bit more easier, never again having to have hammers, chisels, and other general skilling tools in your inventory anymore.
On January 4th, 2012, the Barrows armor was officially updated and remodeled. Almost two months later, on February 28th of this year, the Squill of Fortune was released, making it to where you could spend real money on a chance of getting in-game items, which was also a few years back was apparently the reason for removing the wilderness and free trade. On the 30th of April, getting 99 runecrafting was no longer seen as an achievement amongst players due to rune span being released. And on the 10th of May, fire making became way easier with the release of bonfires. And on March 6th, all of the armor types would never look the same again after getting remodeling done. The Queen Black Dragon, the new hardest boss, was finally released and anticipated greatly on June 26th to September. And the evolution of combat beta had began. And one of the last updates to this version of the game was player-owned ports on the 11th of December and by the end of this year Jagex had over 500 employees and it was also this year that in January Insight increased its stake in Jagex from 35% to 55% giving it a controlling interest in the company. It was also this year for the first time ever in the company's history Jagex turnover rose about 50 million pounds. The 14th anniversary of the formation of Jagex Limited and the 12th anniversary of the release of RuneScape was a big one. Divination, another new skill, was released on the 20th of August. The Calphite King was released on January 14th. The evolution of combat had been undergoing further improvements, and perhaps for a long time now, in some players' opinions, Jagex finally had made an update that everyone had wanted. On the 13th of February, an update was on the main page titled, Old School RuneScape dot dot dot, you vote. More items were being added to the Squeal of Fortune, and this now updated version of RuneScape along with the EOC release, officially became known as RuneScape 3. Virago also had been released with a combat level of 10,000 and is currently today RuneScape 3's most toughest boss out there. Aside from these updates this year, the other ones mainly were just updates having to do with the Solomon's General Store, the Squeal of Fortune, and the main website itself got yet again another entire makeover. I personally had long quit since this period and so many others like me had done the same. I didn't even know old school RuneScape would possibly come back out until it was actually released to the public after all the votes were in later on. Much of the game everyone once knew at this point was so long gone and many veterans who stuck around giving the game a chance even still waited patiently and greatly anticipated the old school RuneScape's arrival and on March 1st the poll ended with a final tally of 449,351 votes and though 500k votes were needed to allow no additional membership fee, Jagex stated that the first six months of OSRS would not have any additional charge due to players voting counts getting so close to that goal, and the old version of the game quickly saw player counts equaling up to those of the live version of RuneScape 3. On the main website on the 14th of March, Jagex finally announced to all RuneScape players that RuneScape and Twitch.tv had been intertwined and many people now make a living offering daily live streams of the game we all love for their viewers who like watching them while they skill. In addition to this, the RuneScape 3 official HTML5 beta had been released this year too, open to anyone who wants to get a taste of the new graphics engine delivering stunning visuals never before seen by browser games before. It offers amazing potential but it's still an emerging technology which isn't comprehensively supported by the current mainstream web browsers, which means that the HTML5 beta client could exhibit inconsistent performance and stability for some players. The beta phase allows early adopters to join the experiment and see what they think themselves of what Jagex believes to be the future of browser gaming. It's very demanding on computers, so only more modern machines are suitable, and Jagex has listed the recommended specs for it on their main website. Old School RuneScape this year was a hit with how many players started playing again and have stayed, continuing their nostalgia-hungry journeys they once started so long ago. The small team of JMods that run the game specifically have only updated what everyone votes for in the polls, and a few of the major updates of the older version of the game from 2014 have been the Motherload Mine, Clan Wars, loads of new treasure trails expansions like katanas, gilded scimitars, dragon canes, and the new third age weapons and cloaks. 
2014 also brought the OSRS Smoke Devil boss, the Kraken Whip, the Wilderness Rejuvenation along with new bosses, and the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, the Corporal Beast along with its sigils for spirit shields, Bounty Hunter along with its new emblem shop, loads of new boss pets, and the extremely popular Iron Man and Ultimate Iron Man mode, and the Trading Post. It's now March 3rd as I'm recording my voice and making this video and so far the only thing that has really been introduced that would be considered a huge update was the Grand Exchange. The GE is now here and many people hate it but there are far more people who like the GE. I personally didn't want it but I will not deny that having it makes the game a tad bit easier in terms of selling your items and buying items. Nobody knows if old school RuneScape will one day end up turning into RuneScape Classic, being deleted if RS3 ever became insanely popular again, and personally I would rather not think about that happening throughout this game. I've made friends, I've lost friends, I've been a player moderator, I've been a rioter, I've been a skiller, I've never been a PKer and probably never will, <laughs> but this game when I started at 10 years old, taught me so much about forming bonds, maintaining resources, and typing, and how the internet really worked, and it bettered my vocabulary, and I owe a lot of who I am today based off of this game, and I now make YouTube videos about it, being almost 21 years old today. <laughs> I can't say for sure what path RuneScape 3 is on now, but personally, I wish for old school to remain old school and hopefully history doesn't repeat itself ever again. Those are just my opinions and keep in mind, I do love this game. OSRS right now is growing with the release of permanent free to play and the future so far guys looks bright. Thanks for watching guys, and don't worry, the next countdown video will be out soon, I promise. I hope all of your expectations were fulfilled with those of you who knew that I was going to do this video, and I hope it was a nostalgic journey for you watching it. Thank you so much for watching once again, and we've recently just hit 25,000 subscribers and over 2 million views on the channel. Guys, you've done so much for me already, but if you would all just take a few seconds to show or express how you feel about this video with either that of a like or dislike, it would be insanely appreciated. It really helps me out a lot, and it gets our name out there for people to see us, and plus, once again, so many of you have said that watching these videos have made you return to RuneScape, and that just blows my mind. And maybe if we can get these videos out there to other people more, other people will start playing again too, which would be just awesome for everybody. Thank you for all that you guys do for me. I'm going to leave now. Have a good day or night wherever you're at in the world and I'll talk to you all very soon.